Bree, it really leads us to the next question, which is where all of this should go. There's been a lot of back and forth. Um, you know, people want to keep a lot of that debris on island because we know that that also unfortunately um, has has the bones and the remains of survivors. Um, so the idea of shipping all of that away is not really, is untenable for many folks. But where do you think that should go? Because the chosen dump site for now uh, has a lot of controversy around it as well. Well, there's always controversy about these kind of things. And I think that the answer, uh, it was in the first part of your question, which is I think the debris should stay here in the island for many reasons. One, because we have to respect those we've lost. And I, I can't personally imagine shipping debris and in some cases the ash of loved ones to some kind of site in you know, Washington State or Oregon or, or the central part of the country. I, that just doesn't seem right to me. Now, as to where this debris should go, that's got to be between the county and the Department of Health. And I think the first site they chose Owalu, I think, was okay. But no matter what site you choose, I guarantee you there will be half the people in favor of it and half the people against it. It's very challenging. So they're going to have to do their best to protect the environment. And that's going to mean lots of uh, mitigating efforts, including really layering in protections inside of the site. That's important. They're going to have to uh, decontaminate what they can. And there's no good answer here. There really isn't. But I think it should probably stay on Maui. Let me also share that if we try to move the debris, say, to the mainland, it's going to cost well over a billion dollars of extra resource. I would much rather have that resource be used to pay for homes or um, transitional homes or a new hospital or anything else, frankly. So it's a consideration. Uh, but the most important consideration is honoring those we've lost. And from your understanding of how much debris is uh, that needs to be removed and cleaned out, uh, is the island of Maui able to hold all of that trash? Is, is the current dump sites that they have, um, do you think the island has the capacity for that much uh, debris? I really would rather defer to people who know this discipline. Uh, you know, if we don't have enough space there, then of course we'll use our other counties. You know, I know the mayors all care deeply about one another. They'll make that happen. Uh, I have not heard that we can't do it. I would assume we can. Um, when things are tragically reduced to, to ash or, or rubble, there's, there's a lot that you can do. It's, the volume is far less. But moving it to the mainland, again, it's a much longer proposition. It would delay the recovery for those who want to stay and live in Maui forever by a lot. And frankly, it probably sets the wrong tone. I think we take care of our own challenges here. And that's one of our strengths. The last time you were here, we talked about the attorney general's investigation and the fact that uh, county officials on Maui were not complying in the way that uh, she would like. And so she did issue several subpoenas. What's the status of that? How is that investigation going? And when can we actually expect to see some of her findings? Sure. So uh, I appreciate people's patience. I talked to the attorney general and met with her today. She has continued to issue subpoenas, which is kind of a I guess an agreed to process now that she and the mayor's team have. The mayor uh, did comment to me that uh, it's in some ways easier for them to know when they're supposed to give uh, testimony and, and have this investigation go on. So he's okay with it apparently. I leave that to him and the attorney general. And she said by the end of February, she would have the preliminary report. She said it's gonna be very technical because it's gonna go minute by minute uh, in every way of what happened, which is important because that's gonna help us to make better decisions going forward about safety, about sirens, about uh, what you do with fire breaks, about how much you need in the way of extra support for firefighters and machinery, all those things. And frankly, I would say we should do a better job with our, um, our reaction to the climate and the dry, the dry climate that we now face because there was a lot of dry grass and there were a lot of heavy winds. This is not the same landscape that we had 50 years ago.